with these ideas, with so few role models yes. for women yes. in general, um, what what can what can our girls, what can our kids, and our and our boys? I mean, I think it's true that that men are beginning to see uh, a change in the way they're represented in the media too. There's a lot more um, naked chests and you know mm -hmm. bodies being sort of glorified right. now on the male right. side as well. Right. You know, what can our kids do to look to a healthy role model? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I'm very concerned about how how the media affects boys and young men in terms of their expectations about women, about women's bodies, about their relationships with women. And I think the most important thing we can do is, as adult folks, model how we interact with members of the opposite sex, of the same sex, what messages are we sharing with our youth about appropriate interactions with other people. And above all, they need to be respectful and they need to call forth and uphold the dignity of the other people that we're interacting with. I think that's what we do. Do you think there's room in the industry, which obviously, again, we have as a consumer, we have a choice. Yes. But we still have the imagery, you know. I mean, I can choose to look at a billboard or not look at a billboard, but I'm still seeing the billboard. Right, it's all around you know. us constantly. So, do you think that we do, as a people, have a power to change that? Yeah, I think we do. Um, and, you know, it's not going to change overnight. Um, on average, we see over, we're exposed to 10 hours of media a day in one form or another. TV, magazines, radio, newspapers, uh, internet. We can, we can think critically about that. We can teach our children to think critically about that. Um, so yeah, we can make it. We can make an effect, or have an effect, um, on what's going on out there by the choices that we make individually. And yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. What's your greatest hope for people screening misrepresentation? My hope is, I think it depends on the individual. Um, for some, it may be a change in perspective. Uh, for others, it may be a recognition of ways maybe that they have not been as loving towards themselves and they need to respect themselves more. For others, it may mean um, engaging some sort of a policy change at the place where they were. Yeah. Now, where can someone go to, one, um, perhaps get in touch with you again, and also find more recess, resources for um, around misrepresentation and, and the, the things that that deals with? Right. Um, so if they want to find out, first of all, let's deal with, with the point of why we're here, and that's misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. If they want to, they can go to the official website for misrepresentation. Um, which is M-I-S-S, -S, right? Right. Representation. That's right, mm -hmm. exactly. And there are a lot of resources there, and the people who have produced it. Um, uh, and by the way, it's directed by a woman, uh, which I think is uh, stellar. Um, they're, they're very helpful folks, and they'll answer emails very quickly. Uh, for myself, if people want to find out more about what I do, the kind of individual and couples counseling, the work that I do with straight folks in the LGBT community, uh, they can find me at my website, www.d as in David, r as in Roger, dr, Brian, B R I A N, Hooper, H O O P E R, dot com, drbrianhooper.com. Awesome. Thank you, Brian, for taking Thank the time. Thank you so much. And again, the screening is November 18th at 7 p.m. And we've enjoyed meeting with you on behalf of Conscious Nashville and uh, I look forward to perhaps speaking with you again down the road.